Today, we visit the Regenstein Castle and Fortress. The castle was first mentioned in a document in 1162. The castle complex was expanded into a fortress by the Prussians from 1671 onwards. The castle only takes up a very small part of the area. Here you can see the whole fortress. The castle is in the back left. In 1677 the fortress became a garrison. In 1736 lightning struck the powder tower, severely damaging the fortress. We take a look at the defensive trenches, once from above and then from below. Further back you can see the musketeer's stairs, which was protected by a strong wall. Up to three men stood on each landing with guns. They targeted the enemy through loopholes. Whenever a man had shot, he stepped back so that the next one could shoot. So the enemy was under constant fire. In 1758, the fortress was made unusable by the Prussians after they had shortly before recaptured it from the French. You see the section trench. Here was the access to the earth fortifications. We turn to the right and enter the southwest bastion. The artillery barracks stood up here, but nothing has survived. The earth fortification can be seen behind the wall. Can you see the little bulges? Here was the first line of defense. We cross the trench and change over to the so-called Friedrich Wilhelm Castle. At this point there were artillery positions and a little further above was a sideline port. There was once a guardhouse up there. The building you see is modern. The rock trench was an engineering challenge. The rock had to be blasted, then it was cut down and finally transported away. The gun trench also served as a protected entrance to the Neubrandenburg Bastion, that can no longer be entered today.
I don't think I need to mention that there were no trees around the fortress. Otherwise, the enemy would not have been seen. This is the location of the old garrison church from 1737. One can no longer recognize more than the foundations. The war powder magazine was located in this cave. The cave was integrated into a house. This tunnel, as beautiful as it is, is modern and designed for tourists. Nowadays, outside access is blocked. We are now entering the castle complex. Since the complex was made unusable by the Prussians, unfortunately not much of the castle complex has survived. This is the way to the so-called Devil's Hole. It is no longer possible to say what the basement was for. But since there was an inlet and outlet of water, it is assumed that a tannery or a dye works was operated there. The front part of the castle complex is completely missing. One can only speculate how it once looked. Through the former trench we pass the casemates which are now exhibition rooms. At this point in the castle, there was once a gate with a drawbridge. Today you enter the complex via a staircase. Since we have chosen the wrong route, we cannot enter the castle through the gate entrance, as it would be usual. This is the castle keep. The hall stood here. It was destroyed by lightning. The destruction was enormous as powder was also stored in it. This is the old castle chapel, St. Nikolai.
opposite the old chapel as a rock room of which one does not exactly know what it was used for. Today it is called parlor. We briefly leave the main castle through the gate entrance through which we should have entered the castle and step out onto the kennel. There is also a cave here. But it is not known what it was for. Maybe the guards sat here to guard the gate. Here you can see the access to the chapel from the gate entrance again. Unfortunately, there are no more buildings in the inner castle. There are only the caves. There were several basement rooms in the castle, of which one cannot say what they were used for. In this basement there should be a 20 meter deep shaft. Another basement room, once from above and then from below. Here you can see the processing of the sandstone very well.
Here, too, the traces of processing can be clearly seen. Was that the place for the candle that you lit before entering the cave? Access to further basement rooms. One room is named Bauer, and there is even said to have been underfloor heating here. At this exposed point in the castle, there was a dungeon and a watchtower. This point is also known as the Lost Position. The guardhouse there was torn away in a storm along with the guard inside. Another cave. There is a staircase leading to the platform. From here you have the most beautiful view. In this cave room, there are the remains of a fireplace. It is called the kitchen. an old cistern. In this cave there is a recess with notches on the floor. We do not know what it was for. This is the old chapel again.
and here at the keep was an old garrison church from 1697. You can still see the white remains of the plaster on the keep. There was a brewery just below the castle. Back then, water was not a safe drink, and so people mainly drank beer, which, however, is not comparable to today's beer. What you see here is sometimes referred to as the mill building and another time as the powder house. It was probably both, just one after the other. We are now going up to the mill hill. It is said that there was a mill up here. The foundations can still be seen. The main castle seen from the entrance gate. Now we go to a rock called the Sharp Corner. This area was later integrated into the defense system, because the main castle could have been shot at very well from here. Access to the fortress from above. And the defense trench in front of it. Also here, at the main gate to the fortress, there was a drawbridge. We have finished our tour and hope you enjoyed it. We would be happy if you are back on our next tour. Then we want to hike over the Devil's Wall with you. So be curious. Take care, see you soon.